Okay. Oh. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wellbeing Weekly. Um, I would like to introduce Paula Thompson. Um, stress rights, an amazing person. I was lucky enough to meet through, was, which networking was it I met you It was on? actually TBN, I T think. It was TBN mm -hmm. that we met on. Yeah. Um, and one of these people that you instantly get a connection with. Um, so I'm delighted to say today that we've got Paula here for our first guest spot on Wellbeing Weekly. Um, and what are we going to talk about today? Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. I'm really privileged to come along and talk to you today. Um, we're going to be talking about um, sleep. Lovely. Mm. Do you sleep well? Mostly. Not all the time. Mostly. Okay. okay. And I do take my mobile phone to bed and <gasps> that is like one of the cardinal sins. It is. I know that. It is. And I do have a yeah. television in my bedroom. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right. OK. I want to talk about sleep. Um, I'm a stress management practitioner, so I help people with their stress and anxiety. And I wanted to start with sleep because if we do not sleep, our whole body doesn't function properly. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I wanted to start. Now, the first thing you've said it already Taking your phone to bed, that's a big no-no. So there are a process, or there is a process to go through when you're wanting your body to calm down mm -hmm. and to get into sleep. Just as a bit of an overview, from the minute you wake up till the time you go to bed, your body is preparing yourself to sleep. And that's how important it is. Really? So, so for that length yeah, of time? Yeah, absolutely. Because sleep is so critical. So what you need to do come the evening, what do we do? We ha come home, we eat a big meal, we sit and watch television. Mm -hmm. We then play on our phones, we play on our iPads or whatever, and, and then suddenly we go to bed. So your brain isn't slowing down. So have you ever heard the, you know, the terminology, well, I sleep well in the winter, but not in the summer mm, yes, because of the that. light. So what, we, what I would always suggest, several things. Firstly, make sure that you've got a yellow or orangey light in your restroom, your lounge, your dining room, your kitchen, your bedroom, wherever you are, that way you want to just slow that down. Stay off of any technology at least two hours before you want to go to sleep. You realise I'm going to play this to my son and, and, and that, that little section, I'm just going to like repeat, play, repeat, play, repeat, play. <laughs> and do you know why? Do you know why you've got to stay off of technology? It's, it's, isn't it something to do with the light? And um, th there's a hormone that we release that starts like the sleep process, exactly. but it affects the release of that hormone. Yeah. I can't remember what the hormone, yeah. I'm not yeah. going to take a guess no, no. because I'll get it completely no, no. wrong. Well, we're not going to get technical because we you know, want to keep it all nice and easy. But basically also that you are absolutely right, but also what it does is you are so engrossed with all of these things that are going on. Nine times out of 10, you're on social media in some way or another. Mm -hmm. You're seeing that your friends are out and you're not. Why is that? So you get yourself all wound up. Mm. So what you think about when you go to bed is all these nightmare things that you've been reading and seeing and, and not being involved in. So not only is the light, but also what you're doing on there. You know, you may be playing games, you may be doing games um, with your friends and your mm. headsets on and you're so engrossed with shooting people and fighting and, and that's how you are thinking. Mm. So, so when Lex sends me a message at 11 o'clock at night saying, I've just had a great idea. Yeah. I shouldn't read that. Well, I, you shouldn't I, have had your phone on. Okay, point <laughs> That's me told. <laughs> So you wouldn't have known about it till the morning. No, that's right. That's right. <laughs> OK, so we, we need to calm everything down. Mm -hmm. OK, now, as far as the light is concerned, we have all these lovely soft lights and we, you know, slowing everything down. And then we go up and we switch the bathroom light on. -ching, we're mm. wide awake, aren't we? Yeah. So try and keep that light as low as possible, because that will really help your brain to know it's time to go to sleep. Isn't it funny how as we get older, we lose that? Because I remember when my children were smaller, every night before bedtime, we used to have what we call quiet time. Yeah. Used to get them all ready for bed. They'd have their bath with their sort of like lavender baby bath yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Wrap them all up. And then we would sit on the sofa. Maybe I would read them a story or, but it was just half an hour of quiet time. Yeah. 
and then into bed. But yeah. as adults, yeah. we don't think about that. We yeah. somehow somehow lose that for ourselves. Mm. 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 But it's exactly the same, Sandy. You know, it's exactly the same. One of the things, that I'm, I mean, obviously we're in a beautiful place today, but this is what I'm saying. Get a book out and read. Reading is so powerful. And I know that it's not for everybody, trust me, with the people that I see, you know, on a regular basis. There are some people that just find it winds them up even more. But reading, you are actually making your eyes tired because mm -hmm. you're reading the words. You have your analytical brain engaged because you have to understand the words. And then you have your creative brain engaged because you're creating the pictures. So all of that is being engaged by the book, allowing the rest of your brain to go, oh, thank goodness, they've stopped. Right. And that's what sleep does. When we're asleep, it files everything away, mm -hmm. puts it all where it needs to be. Do we need that? Yes. Do we need to file it? Yes. Do we need this? No, that can go. And that's what we do when we go to sleep. So if we can have um, our brains into a nice easy book not sort of horror or something that's going to really keep you awake <laughs> even more but it's something that is just gentle and something that you would enjoy doing that's where your brain is going to be when you go to sleep and that's where you then go into a nice pattern of the sleep that we need to go into I mean again I remember being told as a child if you're not well that sleep is good for you that it's good for your physical health it helps it the body recover mm -hmm. so in essence then it's actually the same to be said for your mental health 100% Mental and physical is absolutely intrinsically linked. If you haven't got this right, this is not going to work either. Mm -hmm. And likewise, if you've got an injury and you haven't got your and you think your brain is working right, it isn't. You've got to get the both working in tandem mm -hmm. because it, it's got to be a, a whole body experience, if you like. So the whole body's got to work in tandem. Um, if one thing's out of kilter, so will the other thing be. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting then. So really what we're saying is Get a nice early night. Yes. Wind down before you go to bed. Soft light. Yep. And get rid of your mobile phone. Yes, please. Thank you. If you can do that, we're on to a winner. Excellent.